In this video, we are going to explore the close and important connection between delta G, the Gibbs free energy, and the second law of thermodynamics. Recall that in the second law of thermodynamics, we know that delta S of the universe has to be greater than zero for a spontaneous process. Now, this becomes very confusing because once you learn about delta G, the condition on delta G for a spontaneous process is that delta G is less than zero for a spontaneous process, which does not seem to make sense when we can compare it with delta S. Also, why we'd even bother with a new thermodynamic function such as delta G does not immediately make sense. But let's take a look at that. One of the first things that we need to keep in mind, which will be very useful later on, is this idea of universe. So as chemists, we can break the world up, universe, into two parts, because the universe is a very big place. We can break it up into one part, which we call the system. And the system is just the part of the universe that we care about as a chemist. Everything else we call the surroundings. So this distinction between the system and the surroundings is a very useful one for chemists and will become incredibly important once we start talking about the second law. So what is delta G? Well, recall that by definition, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, where delta H is the enthalpy. T is the temperature, and delta S is the entropy. One very, very important and convenient thing to keep in mind at this point is that one of the reasons why thermodynamic functions such as delta G were invented in the first place was so that we could concentrate merely on the system. So we can actually make a small subscript for each of the thermodynamic functions here to remind ourselves that in each case, what we're talking about is just the system. So right away we're noticing a contrast with the second law because the second law refers to a change in the universe, whereas this delta G function is really talking about a change in a system. And I assert that these two formulations, the delta S of the universe being greater than zero and delta G of the system being less than zero for a spontaneous process are merely restatements of exactly the same fact. We can incorporate our definition of delta G into our condition that delta G has to be less than zero for a spontaneous process by combining that into an inequality. That's our first step. From now on, we don't need to use the delta G system on the left-hand side because we have an equivalent expression for it right here. Delta H of the system minus T delta S of the system is less than zero for a spontaneous process. We're not going to keep writing for spontaneous, but that's the implication for each of the steps. So what do we do first? Our first step might be a surprising one, and we want to multiply both sides of the inequality by minus one. What does that give us? Well, it's going to give us that T delta S of the system minus delta H of the system is greater than zero. And we combine two tricky steps into one at this particular part. So this is one of the most tricky of all the steps in our derivation. The first part that might be tricky is that if we take the negative of a difference, so we have a quantity B minus A, and we take its negative, what we end up getting is A minus B. And we can prove this for ourselves if we use a distributive law, treat the minus sign in front as a minus one, and multiply through, we see that we do get A minus B. The second step has to do with 
a peculiarity of inequalities. Recall that if we have an equality, so we have an equation, we have an equal sign. So long as we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, we're okay. That isn't exactly true for an inequality because if we multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, or we divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we have changed the system and we have to change the direction of the uh, inequality sign. So if we multiply both sides by minus one, I still have minus x and minus y, but I have to change the direction of the inequality sign. So that is how we end up with the result of getting t delta s of the system minus delta h of the system being greater than zero. What do we want to do next? For our next step, we simply want to go through and divide by t. And this is a legitimate operation of divide by t on this side as well, because we know from the third law of thermodynamics that t is not only never zero, because we can't divide by zero, but we also know that it has to be positive. So since it's positive, if we divide through both sides of the inequality by a positive number, we do not change the direction of the inequality sign. So we're okay that way. And we also know that it's not zero. So once we've divided both sides by t, this gives us the result at delta s of the system minus delta h of the system divided by t is greater than zero. Again, this is for a spontaneous process. Now, it may not look like we've improved things by the manipulations that we've done so far but we really only have one step left. And that is to notice the following feature. And that is that we can use the definition that the uh, delta S of the surroundings is simply delta H of the system divided by T. You may be familiar with the Boltzmann definitions of entropy but often the classical definition of minus delta H over T is many times more useful. So once we realize this particular fact, that delta S of the surroundings is equal to minus delta H of the system divided by T, we simply substitute um, delta S of the surroundings for this expression here into the inequality. Once we've made that substitution, we get the result that delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings is greater than zero for a spontaneous process. But here we just use the fact that the system plus the surroundings is simply the universe. So this sum here is just the entropy of the universe. Greater than zero for a spontaneous process. What is this statement? It's nothing but the second law. So we see that the condition that delta G has to be less than zero for a spontaneous process is nothing more than a convenient restatement of the second law. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.